questions. If you have questions, we can, we can do all of that. But let's start our practi practice today, day number six, for the luscious legs. So hopefully you've found, let's found a comfortable position on our backs with the knees bent and feet on the floor in constructive rest, letting your back body, your spine release into the floor. So we want to land and locate and then feel the soles of your feet. We found the importance of the feet and we still get to be grounded through the feet here today. We're gonna start uh, today's practice where we started on Friday. So we're actually gonna move from our feet first. So if you feel your feet, you're just going to do those body rocks where you gently begin to push into your heels. And as you push your heels into the ground and push your feet forward, your body will rock towards the, the head of your mat. And as you pull your heels towards your buttocks, your body will rock slightly forward. Just check to see that your feet aren't too far forward. If they're too far forward walking, your back is going to be arched. And if they're too close to your buttocks, your back is gonna press into the ground. So find that place where your low back can be long, but with its natural curve. And then pressing into the feet and just getting a little like vibration going in your body. So we're addressing the whole body first in a nice light patterned rocking motion. If your head wants to move, you can allow your head to go side to side. Check in with your breath. Always the opportunity to use your body as your vessel today for awareness and conscious connection, or you can use your breath. We won't be doing a breath-centered movement practice today, but remember the breath is always there for you. And then stop and pause just for a moment. See if you can still sense the feeling of vibration in your body. Breathe in and notice, breathe out and land and locate, particularly the parts of your body that are on the ground. And then we're gonna take the legs out long and we're gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna come up just for a moment. As always, when you extend your legs, if there's too much arching or pulling in your low back or your tops, your thighs, you can take a blanket, whatever height you need it, roll it up and put it underneath your knees like that. So coming down, once the legs are long, once again, just gently push the balls of the feet forward. So I'm pushing towards my dog and then I'm pulling back. And you might notice how as you push the balls of the feet forward, your back will arch, you'll get a little bit of a bend in the back. And as you pull the tops of the feet towards your shins and push your heels forward, your back will flatten into the ground. And then we do that again, just in a nice, easy pace, just creating a little bit of a vibration. Think of it as a nice energy current going up through your spine and see if your head is loosening. So we're doing this mostly so we can address the legs. We do a whole body thing to let the rest of the body know it, it gets to uh, go on holiday for the next whatever half hour, however long it is. And then relax again, come back to the center. Feel just your left leg and sense your left leg all the way from the toes to the hips. See what you can see and what you can't see. And you're gonna begin to slowly slide your left leg in. So we're going into flexion of the knee and the hip and slightly through the ankle. So you're just gonna slide the foot in and slide it back out. By the way, if you're at home and you have thick carpet or you have a really sticky, sticky mat, I do not. This is a great sliding mat. I use it a lot for uh, somatics. You can just double up your mat so you have so somewhat of a slippery surface. It's gonna be a little bit helpful today to have that. Or the other thing is you can put socks on today for today's practice. Slippers, socks, whatever you're comfortable in. So you're just sliding that back and forth and just feeling how those joints, you know, we, we're, we're bending our knee, we're also flexing the hip, right? And you're gonna feel how the ankle is changing position too. So thinking of these three joints today as we're working through and what are the muscles doing to move those joints? My definition of a joint, once again, is it joins two parts of the body. And the best relationship, the best marriage in a joint is stability with, without strain or limited. If we have too much stability, we call it rigidity, right? We don't want that. And then we also want mobility. 
but we want just enough mobility so that there's not any sense of um, not being supported, right? So stability and mobility. And just sliding back and forth. And then let that leg come back out. Relax it for a moment. And we're going to begin to internally and externally rotate the leg. So if you think of the pinky toe side of your foot or your outer hip, you're going to roll the leg outward. As best you can, try to do that without bending your knee for now. So keep the leg straight. Think of the whole leg line from the toes to the thigh rolling outward. And you can move from the pinky toe side of the foot. You can move from the hip. We're going to play with all of that today. And then let it just come, don't pull it back, let it come back. So a lot of us naturally, that is our position as our foot rolls out a little bit in its relaxed state, right? And then bring it back to whatever neutral is, let it just come back to neutral. And then you're gonna go the opposite way. You're gonna think of the big toe side, inner thigh, and roll that towards the center of your mat. And then just let it go. So now we're rotating, the leg is staying long, rotating in and out. Remember, too, that you can have a blanket underneath just the right knee while we're not working with the right leg so that that one is relaxed. That's an option. And just rolling in and out. So looking for, think of your joints, stability without rigidity and mobility without instability. That's the relationship you're sending in this body prayer today. That's what you want to find. Sometimes we get really caught up on building too much strength. I want to be strong. I want to be strong. Or we think, oh, I need, you know, I have people come to me all the time. I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. Well, <laughs> first of all, that's why you need yoga. But it's not just about flexibility. It's about this balance, right? And you're just rolling your leg back and forth and feeling that. You can feel it from your foot from your thigh, from your knee. Think of those three joints. And then relax it again. Every now and again, by the way, check into your right leg because I just noticed I was tightening my muscles in my right leg. So you can let that go and check your shoulders. So do a little body scan, make sure there's no tension building anywhere else. So we're going to be adding on to that now. So you're going to externally rotate the left leg, which means the thigh bone and the toes are going to turn out, pinky toe towards the ground. Then you're going to do the slide we did before, but in that position. So when you slide it, you're going to be more in what we call like a tree pose in yoga. Your thigh will be out to the side, and you can just let it fall for a moment. Feel the pink, notice how the pinky toe side of your foot is on the ground. Then you're going to slowly lift the leg all the way up until you feel the foot flat on the floor. Then feel the big toe side of your foot and begin to draw that bent leg across to the right. So you're going to feel some lengthening through your hip there. Let the hip land back on the, so we went on to the big toe side of the foot. Now we're back flat footed. Slide the leg out. <clears throat> Here's the second part of the movement. So that was the external rotation and then we go in. Now we're going to internally rotate the thigh. So roll the big toe towards the floor. And you're going to take your left heel and slide it out towards your outer left hip. So this is internal rotation. And just go as far as you can. It, you know, you want it to be smooth. So if you're down here, that's okay too. We're going to slide it in. Let Take a moment to let the thigh fall inward. Then slowly press the pinky toe side down to lift it up. Slide it back long again. So let's do one again together. Externally rotate the thigh so pinky toe towards the floor. Slide the heel up towards your perineum. Take a moment to just let the weight of the leg fall. Feel your joints. Begin to slowly think of lifting the inner thigh or pressing big toe side of the foot into the ground to lift the leg up, knee up towards the sky. Then you can either push into with the big toe or lift away from with the left hip to get the leg across. So we push into or pull away from to create force. Find the perfect match for you. Come back, slide the leg out. Now we internally rotate the thigh, so get the big toe side and the arch of the foot down towards the ground, feel the thigh bone roll in. Slide the heel out towards the hip. <clears throat> Take a moment to let the weight of the thigh fall into that internal rotation. Begin to lift up either by feeling your outer hip muscles lift you, that's a nice way to go, go or push the pinky toe side of the foot down and then slide it back again. 
So continue with this pattern, externally rotating, heel towards the hip, towards the buttocks, lift the leg up, take the leg across the midline of the body. You can even reach your thigh bone towards the front right corner of the mat. Come back, let everything land, slide it forward, internally rotate, slide the heel out towards the hip, let the thigh bone fall in, lift the leg up, slide it out. So here are some other things we can add, but remember the focus today is on the leg, so if you want to just continue doing the leg, please do that, especially if this is new for you. It's like I say, it's like juggling balls, and if it causes any type of anxiety, if your breath changes because we keep adding things on, and you're like, wait, I'm still trying to figure out that last one, just do the first part, okay? Just continue with the leg. Otherwise, as I externally rotate my thigh and I draw my leg up, I'm gonna let it fall and then I'm gonna, short, so this side of my waist, this left side is already short. I'm gonna add to that by gently reaching my left arm towards my right leg. So now we're gonna make it more of a torso movement to full body. So I'm shortening that left side and I might even reach my right arm overhead. I tend to look at my left shoulder, my head just rolls and I can pause there for a moment. So I'm creating this C curve with my spine the leg, the left leg and arm are coming towards one another. The right side is long. And then I just gently slide that back. When I'm ready to lift that leg up, I press into the big toe side of the foot, let the thigh lift up. And now as the leg goes across the midline, reaching the thigh bone forward, I can reach my left arm overhead, feel all of that length through the left side, through the thigh, through the hand. You can look over either shoulder, see where your head wants to go. Come back to center, slide the arm down, slide the leg out. And then with the internal rotation, you can roll that thigh bone in. As your heel kicks out, same thing. You can, like you're gonna tickle your own foot, you can reach that left foot towards your foot, reach the right arm overhead. So we're getting that long curved right side and that compression through the left side. So we're adding the spine, adding the torso. Then I come back lift the leg back up and slide it out. So these are just some options. You might also notice that maybe your arms don't want to move or your torso, but your head wants to roll. Let's do, do a few more on your own with just this left leg. So with the external rotation, heel towards the buttocks, drop it open, maybe side bend towards that leg like you want to look at your left knee. Or you can also draw your left side short, but look out at your right hand. Maybe that's where your head wants to go. So the whole thing is we don't want to be stuck in a movement pattern. You want to be able to look at both knees, both arms, right? You want to be able to see your left thigh, see your right, right arm. Come back to center, lift up. Come on to the big toe side, reach forward. Left arm overhead, I can look at my left arm. I can also look to my right. Breathe into the left ribs. Take your time going through these really slow. Just focusing on that left leg. The right leg is relaxed. Internal rotation, kicking the heel out. <coughs> Internal rotation is the one that will get a lot of people too. We tend to be tighter there. Anytime you find a space where your body says, hmm, interesting or yummy, you can hang out there for a minute. That's always been, many of you know, my joke in class is when you find something that is unexpected or just curious, the word I say to myself is interesting. Because otherwise what we try to do is we explain it to ourselves, we need to attach it to a story, oh, my hip feels that way because this happened to me however many years ago, right? Your body doesn't need explanations. It just wants to communicate and have you listen. And you don't have to talk back let just the body do the talking and you're just listening. And the other part of that is make no comparisons, make no judgments, and delete the need to understand. That's a beautiful quote from Brew Joy. So now that we hopefully found this movement, you don't have to watch me. I'm gonna be quiet for a moment. I'm gonna give you a full minute to play in this movement do not restrain yourself, so completely unrestrained. Whatever, you know, if you want to slide a leg, if you feel like reaching through your right leg a little bit, do that. There's no right or wrong. 
we're still organically moving the leg through these movements and whatever else adds itself in. You might do it with your eyes opened or closed. We learned about the eyes the other day, the importance of leading from the eyes, how that feels not so good versus taking the eyes closed. your head like a nice big ripe watermelon just letting it roll whenever it wants to don't question why feel the opportunity to breathe into your left lung when you have it or your right lung Remember to give yourself that space of grace often. So there's the movement, the force that takes us into the movement, but then at the end of the movement, there is that time to rest and yield and relax into this new position in your body. Just feel yourself in that position. Where do you feel your skin stretching? What well, feels tight? Some muscles need to tighten, right, to move you in the first place, but then can you relax those muscles? We'll do one or two more, just playing with this left leg. And you're also experimenting with moving from, you can move from different joints. You can move from your hip, your knee, your foot, your ankle. So where do we initiate the movement from, right? And even if you initiate from your hip, Feel the way your foot is moving, your ankle is moving. And we do that, and then we do the full leg roll first. The whole leg works as a team. Finish off your last one, wherever you are, and then come back. Come back to a position where your body feels symmetrical. If you like the blanket under your knees, do that. And I just want you to be fully present in both the left and the right side of the body. If we were to come and put a plumb line through the center of your body, right between your feet, and come all the way up through the base of your spine, through the length of the spine, the throat, the brow point to the crown of the head, just sense yourself from the left and the right. And use descriptive words, your own words, your own thoughts, felt sensation to describe what you feel. So there's simple things like heavier or lighter, warmer, colder. My left leg right now feels very fuzzy. My right leg feels very heavy, like it's not even attached to my hip. I also noticed my left leg is less externally rotated. It's standing more straight up now my kneecap up towards the sky than when I started versus the right leg is turning out externally rotating so there's just things we notice and you can sense how your two butt cheeks are resting on the ground is one little little more complacent than the other but using descriptive words this is a really important part of our practice it's not just that we're stopping to sleep and rest we're letting our brain soak up this new information this is the, the part where our brain can experience from the inside out the differences in the two sides of the body through the nervous system. So it's sometimes referred to as body mapping. It's no different than when our brain tells us that we have to go to the bathroom or we're tired or cold or hot. There are so many other felt senses that we miss because we're we're moving and we're doing and we're taking information from the outside into our bodies through our beautiful sensory receptors. But right now, all your sensory receptors are in your body. Just experiencing. And then we're going to be doing the second side. If in between you want to draw your legs into your chest, you could do that. 
You could also place your feet on the floor in constructive rest and do a little bit of that rocking again. Sometimes that's a nice bridge going from right side to left side, just the rocking position. And then both legs will slide out long to start. And you're fully aware and awake, awaken to your right leg. So if you'd like to put a blanket underneath the left leg, that left leg gets to go on holiday now so it can relax. And just feel yourself from your toes all the way through the hip and the right leg. Say good morning to your right ankle and your knee and your hip. Even the grumpy joints get gratitude in the morning, right? We want to tell them what we want, not what we don't want. And then just begin to feel your heel of your foot. And as you're ready, you're going to slide the heel towards your buttocks, bending your knee and your hip. So taking those into flexion and then slowly sliding it back out. And so we might focus mostly on the joints, but notice how as you slide your foot in, your low back might press into the ground a little bit more and lengthen. As you slide the foot out, you might feel some stretching through the top of the thigh. Your low back might arch. So the leg is going to, in some way, influence the shape of the torso, the shape of the spine. You might feel your belly rise or fall. You know, this is a practice of tend and befriend. Tend and befriend yourself. So sliding in, you can do it from your foot. You can imagine making this movement from your foot. That feels very different to me than if I do it from my thigh and my hip. You could also even try to do it from your knee. Let your knee joint lead the way. What does that feel like? That was interesting for me when I did knee joint. I felt my abdominal muscles tighten up. Hmm. See, I might have to explore that later when I'm not on camera. <laughs> and back and forth. And then we're going to let that leg go long. And we're going to do our internal and external rotation of the right thigh. So think of the whole length of the leg again. And just slowly <clears throat> roll the pinky toe side down towards the ground. And the, we're going to roll the thigh bone outward away from the center of the body. As best you can, don't bend the knee. And so <clears throat> let the whole leg line roll together. And let it just, just release it. See, it, it probably isn't going to come straight back up. Just release. And now think of the big toe side, roll the big toe side towards the ground. So you notice how your outer hip might lift a little bit. <clears throat> roll your inner thigh towards the center of your body and then let that go completely. Where does it fall? So just finding this internal and external rotation of the thigh. Rolling foot in and out. Always ability to look at, at the other parts of your body too so make sure you're not tightening your jaws your shoulders as we talked about on I think it was Friday um, there's different types of pain there's physical pain which is generally um, localized in one place but when we experience emotional or psychological pain it tends to move and it's all real pain but if something's in your leg and it decides to move today, keep that other part of your body relaxed. And then when we're ready to add the slides, we'll do that. So you're going to externally rotate that right leg. And then think of drawing the heel up towards your perineum or maybe your thigh towards your rib cage. Whatever works for you, let it just drop open. Feel the big toe side of the foot. You can lift. You can either push in with the big toe side of the foot or lift away from with the outer thigh. So we. That's how we create force, right? Push into with gravity or pull away from. And then take the leg across. Feel that nice hip stretch in the outer hip. You can hug your inner thigh. Your inner thigh is engaged. And then take that back, land, slide the leg out. Opposite direction, internally rotate the thigh. Then you're going to slide that right heel out. This first one's always interesting, especially on this side for me. So I just pause. I pause and I tell myself, it's okay, whatever you feel, experience it, be present in it. It's nothing to be afraid of. And then you can lift up first. I like to lift up first and then slide it back out. So that's the leg movement, externally rotating right leg, sliding the heel up towards the perineum, 
let it fall open and we'll do just the leg first it, it deserves your full attention you can push into the big toe side take the leg across so now that you know there's the torso and the arm movement too sometimes we want to jump right into that on the second side but don't give this <clears throat> give both legs time to just express themselves before we move into the rest of the body and lifting up notice does your kneecap want to come all the way up towards the sky and we're trying to create this movement in the most pleasant way possible so that's those forces we create of pushing into and pulling away from what is the combination of pushing into and pulling away from that is most pleasant in your body and also to vary how we do that so that's that's freedom in our body is to be able to say make the same movement but initiating from different places using different muscles I noticed right away my head's starting to roll so I'm not gonna stop it from rolling because it's just it's happening naturally I don't need to force it to do that it just wants to move and then if we want to begin to add the upper body and the torso more I'm on an external rotation so I'll do that first externally rotate the right thigh slide the heel up towards the buttocks and then you can reach the right hand towards the right knee so you're compressing the right side you're already going to feel your left side getting longer and it's it's just responding you're not doing anything um, controlled to do that it just happens but if you want to reach the left arm up overhead too to pet my dog then you can do that and create more space through that left side see which way your head wants to roll arm comes down head head back to center torso you can lift the leg up as you come on to the big toe side of the right foot and reach that right thigh bone forward maybe that right arm wants to slide over and now you get to feel your lovely right lung breathe into your liver say good morning to your liver this is all part of my body prayers I like to picture my organs and say good morning thank you for all the things you do for me so adding that part of upper body if you'd like as the heel slides in you can make that and I have to be very careful maybe you do too not to lift your head just slide your body feel those torso muscles left side lengthening right side compressing contracting reach the left arm maybe even reach through the left leg if that feels good on that side body releasing back to the center big toe side of the foot you can push the big toe side down reach that big beautiful right femur bone forward and inward if you're trying to touch your kneecap towards the front left corner of the mat and reach your right arm overhead so it's like the torso just wants to dance with the leg that's how I think of it I started this dance for my legs and then the rest of my body says wait we want part of that <laughs> we want to be a part of that feeling that sensation and I'm gonna turn it over to you and just take your time if you you know sometimes especially if I'm talking I'll, I'll goof up a little bit I'll forget what I'm doing but that's okay because that's all part of being organic is if your pattern movement doesn't stay exactly the same just let it go if your body wanted to do something else always taking the time to stop and feel and to heal then the heel is to me when we come back to that space of grace and I can just feel my bones again my bones have landed on the ground and I'm not doing and it's nice sometimes to take an extra round of breath there and the not in the doing but just in the being the being phase of your practice And just to pet my dog my furry friend up there take a few more on your own exploring 
the lusciousness of this right leg and how it can influence the rest of your body to create freedom, freedom and space, the potential for movement from your ankle, your knee, and your hip. And if I was really more focused and not teaching, I, I take each one of these movements, I give a different joint the opportunity to start the movement. I'll do it from my ankle, and then I'll do it from my knee, and then I'll do it from my hip. Everybody gets a turn, <laughs> even the grumpy parts. Take one or two more if you'd like. Remember, you can also center yourself in your breath. Home for your awareness can be body or breath. finish up the last round that you're on. As you're finishing, let's come one more time into the constructive rest with knees bent and feet on the floor underneath the knees. So oftentimes I like to start and end the same. So we started in this position just very still. I take a moment to notice what it feels like now. And then if you'd like to gently rock yourself. Notice things like if when you were first doing this, it felt kind of chunky or stuck. Is it a little more fluid? And particularly with the neck, is your neck just wanting to join the movement? Is your jaw more relaxed? So we just kind of sense, is, is this a more organic movement now? We're not forcing our feet, you know, we're not, we're not riding on a horse galloping through a field. It's just a really gentle rocking for your body, creating a nice energetic vibration. And then coming to your still point, take a breath out, let everything land. And in our relaxation today, we will take a cut just a few minutes here. If you want to take your legs out long, <coughs> please feel free to put a blanket underneath them, or you might take them long and do that rocking again just for a moment. Come, coming back to landing and locating on this lovely Monday morning. And back to some imagery this morning. Perhaps this weekend you had the opportunity to let your legs take you somewhere that brought you joy, just like we did with the feet. And where was that? Your strong legs supporting the rest of your body. And the prayer part <coughs> is just that offering these parts of your body gratitude and unconditional love. Regardless of any pain or discomfort we may have felt, and we don't push through the pain. That's not the idea. We acknowledge it and create this flow of loving kindness into the joints. Nobody should have bad knees or, or a hip that's killing them. Our body can hear our thoughts and it responds to them. It's no different than if somebody outside of you said those things to your body. So offer your ankles, your knees, and your hips. First, your undivided attention, but secondly, some loving kindness.
Where's the weight of your legs? Do they feel heavy or light? Do they feel warm or cool? What can you notice about your legs? If you just allow your mind to scan from the toes all the way up to the hips, what descriptive words come to mind? And then getting the opportunity to start all over again, wake up again, Take your full body on, reach through your heels or your toes, reach your arms up overhead. Take a nice deep breath in, <clears throat> stretch and hug your muscles to your bones. Take another big breath in, maybe notice if your back is arching. And then as you take an exhalation, just let everything flop onto the floor. Just release. If you wanna do that one or two more times, you can. And then as far as coming up, you're welcome to stay where you are, come up to a seated position. If you're choosing to come up to a seated position, you may want to roll to your side first and explore the fetal curl position where your nervous system gets a little more love and uh, a little more replenishing as you're working your way back up into the world. Remember what you found inside today. It's really easy to get stuck in what's outside of us and Yoga has a word, Leela, which Leela is the, the play of life. And as Shakespeare says, we're all just players, really. Players on the stage of life. And um, I know my, my stage has been very full right now with lots of characters and um, many villains. And so it's really important in these practices to recognize that that is the play. And there are certain times that we can choose not to play a role in, in some of those in some of those parts of the play. Like some acts are not for us. So what roles do we want to play in that play of life? And these practices are an opportunity to completely step out of that play of life and to connect to your body and perhaps your source and be present in that space. So thank you for doing that with me today. Take my hands to my heart center. Peace joy, love, and light.